Welcome to Koskinen Stadium on the campus of Duke University for a can't-miss clash in ACC women's soccer today between number one North Carolina and number seven Duke. This is one of the greatest rivalries in all of college sports. Duke and North Carolina, the Tar Heels, have dominated the Blue Devils in women's soccer as they have most other women's soccer programs. But the last five, three of those have gone to overtime. So buckle up. I'm Jen Hilder, the longside former two-time World Cup champion, Hall of Famer, Julie Foudy. Julie, what do you think? What are we going to see from Duke, North Carolina in 2020? Well, the interesting thing with Duke this year is they return a highly seasoned veteran group. At, they only lost one starter from last year, and we know UNC is much younger. And on top of that, they lost their leading goal scorer in Alessia Russo. So the question mark has been, who will fill that void for UNC? And I think we have that answer. It comes in the form of midfielder Brianna Pinto, which we knew she could play make. She pulls the strings for the teams, but she also finds these lovely pockets and is shown as she is a goal scorer as well and then Rachel Jones boy what a step up she has made this season two goals as well for Rachel Jones so those are the answers that are going to fill the void for Russo it's looking like and for Duke they've been looking for some offense Julie Mary Kate McGuire leading so far yeah, and, and they've been looking for consistent offense, and it's come in the form of McGuire. The challenge for Duke now is can they find some other help alongside her? But boy, a great start for her year as well. Mary-Kate McGuire, the junior. Well, whether you are ringing the bell or ready to raise a little, well, you know. When it's Duke, North Carolina, you know you're going to get the best. The Tar Heels. Just one conference matchup in ACC women's soccer this weekend, and this is it. It's a good one, Duke and North Carolina. Let's see how both teams will be lining up in this one. Jen Hildreth alongside Julie Foudy. Julie, first for the Tar Heels. You don't usually see them in this formation, but it's their second straight game at a 4-4-2, and great to see Emily Fox back in that starting 11 coming off the ACL tear from last season. Yes, it's a new look for North Carolina. Without that three back, we shall see. And for the Duke Blue Devils. 4-3-3 for Robbie Church's side. And pay particular attention to that Sophie Jones, number seven in the midfield. This is a special player to watch. Former National High School Player of the Year, and she will pull all the strings for Duke today. Sophie Jones, absolutely a special player, as you said, Julie. And Anson Doran's well aware of it. He knows exactly what he's looking for in his opponents. He's been doing this for a while, over 40 years as the head coach at North Carolina. Those 22 national championships, seven-time national coach of the year, an institution in Tar Heel Blue. North Carolina coming in to Durham to visit Robbie Church's Blue Devils. Long time for Robbie on the sidelines as well. 22 seasons as the head coach of the Blue Devils. And hoping his team can have a little more bite in their attack, Julie. They struggled with a lot of draws last season, a lot of games that they just could not get over the hump. They held on defensively but couldn't get the goals. And that's plagued them a little bit here too to start off 2020 as they have ties in their last two, 1-1 against Virginia and 0-0 against Wake Forest. 
<laughs> his comment was, well, we're just trying to stretch this short season. <laughs> I thought that was a good answer. We're just we're making it as long as we can. No, they actually would love to get to some 90-minute games, I'm sure. Duke wearing the black uniforms, North Carolina, the Tar Heel blue. There is Sophie Jones. Up. North Carolina, the reigning ACC regular season and tournament champions. They have made it to the last two NCAA championship games. Pick to win this conference yet again in 2020. There is Brianna Pinto. And there's key players in the attack for North Carolina. Nice foot back from Isabel Cox, number 13. And you're already seeing the challenge for so many teams against UNC, Janice. They pressure as soon as they lose the ball. Now this is a big change for Duke. Delaney Graham starting in the attack for the Blue Devils today. Seeing if she can help give a little more bite up there. Challenge this Tar Heel defense. Graham usually a starter on the back line, but a ton of speed. She flicks this one forward toward Jones. Mia Zhao, player finally able to stay healthy. And this could be a dangerous chance in the box. Point blank range for Graham against her old high school teammate, Claudia Dickey, who makes the save. Oh, and what a great early look for Duke because you just don't get behind UNC very often. You catch them sleeping. Graham in a great position. Doesn't get everything on that one. But encouraging for Duke because they've been having so much trouble on that front three as you were talking about in getting behind defenses. And that is exactly why Robbie Church talked about this big shift. Delaney Graham, as you mentioned, Jen, always on that back line for Duke, but he loves her speed. He said she played there in club coming into college, and he loves what she can do in terms of turning that back line because we know Duke wants to play underneath a lot. They want to play to feet, but they've also got to turn them. And you have to forgive me. I think I combined two of our great stories. There are a lot of connections in this Duke-North Carolina game, but Graham did not play high school soccer with Claudia Dickey. That was Ruthie Jones, the goalkeeper for Duke. So my apologies on that. We do have a great connection with Graham. I'll tell you about that in a moment as North Carolina tries to attack here. I will try not to confuse you anymore. <laughs> Sam Meza, number one, one of several talented freshmen making their way into this Tar Heel starting lineup. 5'4 freshman out of Balch Spring, Texas. And a member of the United States U-20 national team that qualified for the World Cup and are still awaiting when that event is going to take place. Free kick coming here though for North Carolina. It heads right to Jones. We mentioned, mentioned Jones in the open and how she's been able just to get in better positions. This one, a gift that fell to her. But Anson Doran, so complimentary about the way she's been playing this year. Healthy, he said, finally. Freshman and sophomore year had a lot of injury issues. And he said, boy, has she really made a turn for us. Yeah, I feel she adds just something different, a real creative element to her game. Perhaps you'll get a chance to see on display here. No service! There's Cox, sophomore, who was a big part of North Carolina's attack last year, one that was amongst the best in the ACC, leading the conference in total goals and assists per game. And Isabel Cox, big part of that attack, five goals, six assists, member of the ACC All-Freshman team. Ruthie Jones making her third straight start in goal for the Blue Devils.
Paige Tolentino, freshman out of Pinehurst, North Carolina, has claimed that starting left back spot in this formation for the Tar Heels. And there is the pressure. Regardless of formation, that is certainly part of the DNA in an Anson Dorrance coached North Carolina team. Jones and Duke wanting to try to find something on the counter attack here. Mackenzie Pluck had her initial ball bounce back. And that Delaney Tolentino matchup you're going to see at the bottom of your screen there. Number 22 for Duke, number four for UNC. I mean, that is going to be one that's going to be so much fun to watch today. Tolentino, a freshman for UNC. And that whole left side, actually, for UNC is freshman with Sam Meza in front of her. And so I know that's an area, as you're already seeing early on for Duke, an area they want to attack. <laughs> the problem is you still have Macy Bell that cleans up everything. So, yes. And the center back position. Such a hard one to get around. Macy Bell, the reigning ACC freshman of the year for North Carolina. And, and what a job she did in her first year. It was, I think, very impressive. And I said this a lot last year. It was impressive and I think speaks to her quality that a defender won ACC freshman of the year when you had another freshman in Deanna Ardonias at Virginia that tied for the lead league in scoring. Here is Delaney Graham. Gets it across, making things happen, Graham, in the attack. Not even 10 minutes in, though, and this is exactly what Duke wanted to do, is be able to stretch that back line, stretch that defense, and that's what Graham is giving him already. Once she gets in, this one she's actually getting to the in line. And it's quite remarkable for a player who doesn't play on that front line much. She's, as we discussed, been on that back line mostly for Duke her entire career. Has some experience playing in the attack back in her club days. But yeah, she's been relied on primarily as a defender and as a two-time All-ACC selection in that role for Duke. And, and Jen, not to get too much in the weeds and wonky with the tactics of it, but the importance of doing that against UNC is huge because of the pressure they put on the ball. And because of their ability to get numbers around the ball defensively, you have to stretch them so then you can play underneath. Julia Dorsey, also a lacrosse player for the Tar Heels, but when Anson Torrance was very happy to discover and add to his roster a year ago. Pinto being hounded by Jones. Taylor Otto, big leader in the center of the field for North Carolina, number six, now Bell. Meza has some time. Up, 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 close. Tolentino up, up. couldn't connect, but here comes Dorsey. Emily Fox has appeared with the U.S. Women's National Team ball into the box and into the gloves of Ruthie Jones. Also. A Good sign for UNC as well, getting those outside backs forward. Emily Fox on one side, Tolentino on the other. We talked Fox early so on important. about, yeah, missing Russo this year, but it's not just Alessia Russo they're missing. That English trio all gone for North Carolina. Anson Dorrance talking about, hey, look, they had the chance to play professionally in their country. I'm not going to get in the way of that without us having possibly a national championship and all that's happening in this country. So you've got Russo at Man United playing alongside Tobin Heath, former UNC alum, and Kristen Press as well there, and Uba Moy at Arsenal, and Joel eventually 
we're told, possibly at West Ham. That's right, and I, I was just reading a little more about that, Julian. We did talk with Anson about that this week, and he, he was very honest and said, look, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think this is what's going to be best for you. And they were heartbroken in some ways to have to leave this program that they have really enjoyed being a part of. Mm. Yep. That's such a hard decision. Yeah. And we're seeing it in the professional side, too, a lot of professional women's players from the NWSL opting to go play elsewhere to get more games, to get more competition. And you have to remember, being here in the United States during this pandemic, not a lot of people are going to come here to play, and they don't want you to go there either. So it, it does limit yeah. what you're able to do, and especially traveling back and forth with, with your national teams. Yeah, it's understandable for sure. If you want to get those games in and be able to train on a consistent basis, then I can see why they're all going. Free kick here for Duke. Tess Bodie to take it. Sydney Simmons will play it back. Chance to turn. McGuire had it tapped away. I don't know about that choice and color of the headband for Mary Kate McGuire in this particular game. It's got a little bit of that Tar Heel blue to it. Ball in the box and then goes behind the goal, but a nice move and some good pace put on that ball by Bodie, the senior out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Bodie getting forward out of that attacking central midfield position, a little Meg. Little magic we were talking about. Getting some other numbers forward. All encouraging signs for Duke. And Robbie Church talked a lot, Julie, about being willing to take chances and make mistakes and be brave in the attack. We think we're seeing some glimpses of that so far. And to have more bite. I mean, you cannot play against UNC. He said, for such an experienced team, I've been surprised in the inconsistency of their bite. And he says that's the one thing about UNC they always bring out of you. You have to give everything against a UNC team to survive. And you are seeing it. You're seeing it when they're pressing defensively, winning ball back. Handball there. Nicola Olesic, our referee today. I'll be curious once we get a chance to see North Carolina in this formation a little bit. Julie, your thoughts on how you feel it's working for them. I know it's early still, but as you said, it is a big change. And now they'll have a free kick. Fox will take it quickly. Dorsey so confident on the ball. Refused to go backwards, wanted to keep that play forward. Now it's up to Bell to cover. And with a touch like that, she does. Fox had her season cut short a year ago with that ACL injury. The NCAA quarterfinals. Yeah, it's so good to see Emily Fox back. I mean, they had started the season with her in that outside wide five, so a three, five, two, similar to what they played last season. And Anson said, I quickly realized, look, that to ask of that wide outside midfielder in a five position, you're playing, you know, outside back, outside midfield, you're having to get forward. I mean, it is the one of the most grueling positions, of course, in that three, five, two. So he said, you know, this situation in a 4-4-2 gives Emily the Fox the opportunity to pick her moments because she's still getting her minutes back. She's only 10 months out from that surgery. Second ACL by the way. Hmm. So she gets to pick her moments when she goes forward and she's so good at getting forward as we've seen just glimpses of already. So they do want her getting forward but of course it seems to play better to her, her minutes and strengths right now in that 4-4-2. 
and on top of that, yes, yes, I think you're going the same place. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) On top of that, Vlatko Andonovsky is still still looking. I feel like we've been looking for an outside back or just this, you know, revolving door at outside back on the national team position for years now. But there still is a you know, discussion of, you know, they're looking still for more outside back options. With Hope Fox no, three appearances there. there. Yep, with the national team. Is this ball? Graham's going to give a run at it. Coming up next Sunday, get ready. It's an ACC Women's Sports Quadruple Header starting at noon with two field hockey matches leading off with North Carolina Duke and then BC Louisville. Women's soccer then takes over with matches starting with Miami, Virginia, capping it off with Clemson and Duke. That's your Sunday best right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Good job by Duke pressing when they lose the ball on their right side, UNC's left side. Again, we mentioned earlier that's where the two freshmen are for UNC and Meza and Torrentino, Tolentino, excuse me. Jow applying some nice pressure defensively, takes this away for Duke. Bell and Otto back on it now for North Carolina. Meza. Trying to set up Jones and Taylor Mitchell saying, come on and get it, Ruthie. And eventually Ruthie Jones does make it out there. Sophomore goalkeeper out of Charlotte, North Carolina, played High school soccer at Charlotte Ladin, as did North Carolina goalkeeper Claudia Dickey. Those two were teammates in a number of sports, basketball, club soccer, high school soccer. <laughs> Carpool together. Mm-hmm. There's no greater bond, as I know, as a driving mom than that carpool. <laughs> they are important. Spend a lot of time doing that. <laughs> So many connections, actually, between these two teams. Yeah, as you would expect, obviously separated by just a few miles down the road, Chapel Hill and Durham. And recruit a lot of the same areas. Graham goes back to Simmons. Talked about the connections with our goalkeepers at Charlotte Ladin, and there's some of those carpool buddies on their way to basketball and of course, oh. last year they had a chance to wear the opposing colors of blue when North Carolina and Duke met, but Ruthie Jones not starting in that match. She has taken over the starting spot for the last few. Now for the Blue Devils. Jones and Cox trying to work a connection. Cox will get a shot off. Easy save, though. I told my Isabel, my 13-year-old, uh, I said, when you watch this game, you watch number seven, Sophie Jones. Izzy's a, a midfielder as well. I mean, Sophie Jones coming off an ACL tear that ended her freshman season early, sadly, for Duke. But back healthy, you see her in that number seven, still has the brace on. Um, but such a fun player to watch. Why do you think so that is, Julie? Good. What is it about her? So good with her angles and her touches. I mean, just watch. She'll she'll make a run. It's just these little movements to get her angles right and support. And always, as we say, eyes in the back of your head. Always got her head over her, looking over her shoulder. Always, you know, getting in these little pockets. Just really good movement. Very impressed by her. And, Jen, she grew up like 
two miles from the fine institution of Stanford University. <laughs> I was like, how do we not get her, Robbie Church? He's like, hey, I worked my magic. Her mom hey, you know, went to Stanford. Her grandma went to Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Robbie was like, you know, she came to see Duke, and we just hit it off right from the start. Like, there was just, I just love the kid. She's an amazing kid. She's a great student. She really liked Duke. And he said, I totally snabbed her. I'm like, you did. You snabbed her from us. Hey, that connection is so important, right? And it hit right off yeah. uh, between them and between this program and Sophie. And you know, she also said, I knew you'd appreciate this, Julie, when she was talking about her decision. She's a big sports fan, so she got to go see a game in Cameron and that was a big selling yeah. point, of course, basketball. And she said that uh, the cafeteria at Duke, I don't know if was, she just made this up or was rated number one, but either way, the food must be good. And that was a big selling <laughs> point as well. <laughs> and she liked blue. I was like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Might have seen Abby Allen come into the match number two for North Carolina. Another freshman who took the place of Emily Fox, who is on a minutes restriction as she is coming back from that ACL injury, trying to be very careful in terms of how much they ask of her. So we knew that the substitution would be coming with Allen. And in that move, a slight shifting we anticipate seeing in the way that back line arranges itself as Fox had been on the outside and expect Julia Dorsey to slide into that spot and Allen to take one of those center back positions. Oh. Emily Royson, player who's really allowed Delaney Graham to get up into the attack as she started this match at Graham's usual spot at right back. Jones has some space. And you saw in that with the Royson and the Graham exchange, Jen, you saw Royson making a run forward. Graham naturally pops into that right back position to cover for her. Royson now just making her way back. Earlier, you just mentioned with the change of Allen coming in for Fox Dorsey going to that right back position, which indeed happened. Dorsey, mind you, at UNC for a lacrosse full scholarship. A stud on that team as well. How about that? Yeah, that's never easy to be a two-sport athlete, especially at the Division I level in the ACC. We did ask the question what happens if, as is slated to happen, they play in the spring, and Anson said, well, of course she would play lacrosse. That's why she's here. <laughs> I can't steal her for both. I wouldn't do that to Jenny Levy. What a program Jenny is built there. And that information coming out from the NCAA over the last couple of weeks, giving us some more information that there will indeed be a spring season. We have the dates for that now. This is obviously a limited number of games in the fall season. The NCAA tournament and college cup will be in the spring. So it's gonna be interesting, a split season, it turns out for collegiate women's soccer. And of course only four on, conferences across the country playing right now, the ACC, SEC, Big 12 and Sun Belt. Expect a much larger pool once the spring season gets going. Nice turn there for North Carolina and the shot as save is made by Jones. I think that was Talia Della Peruta, talented freshman of coming Georgia. Better little sequence for North Carolina as well. Della Peruta just seeing a little window. I think that is a bit ambitious from that wide, far out, but a better sequence for UNC. Dickie taking over that starting goalkeeper job. Full time at the moment for North Carolina. Over the years, so used to seeing Anson Dorrance switch his goalkeepers, often have one start the game, one play the second half. But Mars Josephson, who split with Dickey last year, has been hurt. 
And Dickey was another two-sport athlete. Julie played basketball as well, but is now committed full-time to soccer and was a part of that U-20 team I mentioned earlier that qualified for the World Cup earlier this year. That looks like a foul just outside the area that'll set up a pretty nice free kick here for Duke. That back four for Duke doing a really good job of building out. Mia Zhao starting this. And just a little slip ball into McGuire. Freezer up there. I mean, Zhao's story, which we'll get into after this set piece, is one that des deserves about 45 minutes of explaining because it's that incredible. Story of perseverance for sure and fighting through injuries, and she certainly helped set up this opportunity. Is touched out wide. Out of bounds for a corner. First of the match for the Blue Devils. What? I think she's just A couple substitutions coming in for Duke. Great to see Lily Nebet, one of the captains and a senior on this Blue Devil team. She's been out the last two matches with an injury, but makes her return today. And Grace Watkins, a freshman out of Manhattan Beach, California, also coming on for the Blue Devils. Ball kept close to the goal, but those long arms of Claudia Dickey take it away. Nice and clean by Dickey. I mean, when you got players around you, she made that look easier than it is. Otto. Nebet quickly getting into the action for Duke. This ball could bounce nicely for Cox. Zhao couldn't handle it that time. Del Peruta finds Pinto. Pinto will take her shot. Ruthie Jones has been busy. And that's the situation that UNC wants to find Pinto in, right at the top of the box. She's really good about just creating little pockets, little angles. She gets a step, a little window. Ruthie Jones there to cover it, but Pinto, as we've seen, over the course of now her third year at UNC is so dangerous in that tight position. North Carolina trying to attack again. Jones with the header. Got to keep up with the Joneses around here. Rachel Jones saved by Ruthie Jones. And Jones has been a little bit quiet. Tolentino, that left back getting forward. What a great gap she finds there. Four saves already in this first half for Ruthie Jones. Graham now on the far side of the field for Duke. And it taken away. Bodie got it back for Duke, has a chance in the box now. Tess Booty all the time in the world. A chance again. That was Grace Watkins. Duke just about created something out of nothing, but then couldn't really challenge the Carolina defense. Still, though, Blue Devils on the attack. Jones somehow keeps the ball. Royce into Graham. 
shot from distance. It's Nabet getting into the box. The senior has it finally taken away. Meza. Player Anson Dorrance describes as having an exquisite first touch. Keeps this attack going. Jones with two defenders to split. And the whistle is blown. Let's get four. This foul outside the area, so North Carolina will set up for the free kick. Here's it on the other side with Bodie doing all the work here. She cuts the initial entry pass, then wins it. And then I think she's caught. She's looking for that little seam, can't find it. Do I shoot? Do I pass it? She could have just cranked one from there, low and hard. But the key is, as Duke knows so well, having played UNC so many times, you only get so many looks against UNC. Got to be efficient in front of goal. Now it is North Carolina trying to set up this free kick. Pinto will take it herself. It was touched up and over by Jones. So corner kick coming for the Tar Heels, their second of the match. First ever goal scored by Brianna Pinto in her North Carolina uniform came directly off a free kick her freshman year against Ohio State. Hey, everything's out block. Let's go. Macy Bell, number 25 for UNC. Clearly a target for them on these corner kicks. Left foot of Tolentino pops it way up in the air. Too much contact, though, will whistle the play dead. There is. You saw Macy that Bell. time and again last year, Julie, with Macy Bell. Just so dangerous. Bell had three goals for North Carolina last season. All of them headers, two off corner kicks, one off of a free kick, to your point. Watkins. And as predicted, Duke on their right side, putting a lot of pressure on Tolentino. Jow for Nabet. Oh, we never finished the Jow story. Jen? We did. We've the got, we did not persevere in our t storytelling, but she. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, sophomore year, she has an ACL injury that season ending. Junior year, an Achilles tear that's season ending. And senior year, she's a redshirt senior now. Another Achilles tear. So two Achilles one. tears and an ACL injury. And Mia Zhao just kept fighting back. Talk to anyone yeah. on the Duke team and they say, what an inspiration she's been to see her continue to come back and finally getting to play. And thank goodness they are playing in her redshirt senior year. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's incredible. And I think everybody was rooting to see this young lady finally get a chance to stay healthy and be out on the field. Yeah. Played in 23 games as a freshman in 2016 before that litany of injuries really limited her the last three years. By the way, the, the second unit has just come on for North Carolina. That was a lot of that changing of the guard, as you saw. North Carolina known for that, bringing in what Anson calls his game changers off the bench. Notably, though, later than he ones. used yes. to do. Said he's giving his starting group a little bit more time. Here are some of those newer players. Libby Moore, number 20. Pierce took the shot. Try to catch you up on all of those substitutions as we go along here.
thanks to a scheduled change, we've got Friday Night Lights this week with Wake Forest hosting Campbell at Truist Field in Winston-Salem. Our coverage starting at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. So those substitutions that came on for North Carolina, Ali Gambo, number 16, you see there, mentioned Libby Moore, number 20, Tori Hansen, number 22, Hallie Clanky, 26, Maggie Pierce, 28, just took that shot on cue, thank you, and Izzy Brown, number 52. All of those, that's the entire midfield and front line for the Tar Heels. Tolentino hasn't gone anywhere. That left foot still alive and well, creating this corner. Hey, let's get it set up. Let's go. And this is where UNC gets you, those fresh legs in the front six. As you mentioned, Jen, the full front six swapped out. And you just don't lose much in terms of that second unit. The depth is so good as it always has been with UNC. Clanky to Bell. Clanky got it back. Jones had to punch it, still alive, and in the back of the goal, North Carolina's reserves have scored. Macy Bell got in the thick of it, and North Carolina put it away. And here's another look at it. The first one comes to Macy Bell, and she continues going forward. UNC, as they always do, keep this one alive. Ruthie Jones just trying to punch it and doesn't get enough on it. Macy Bell there to clean it up in the end. And it's this punch right here. If they could just get a little more on it, clears all of that danger. And North Carolina punishing them for that mistake. And, Again, as we talked about earlier, Duke really having two of the better chances in this first half, not capitalizing on them. And you just know against a UNC team that they punish you when you don't right. finish on. it off. Come on, Come on, Come on, yeah, that one, as you said, Julie, just really that punch not clean enough by okay. Ruthie Jones. It even out of bounds would have been better give up a corner kick, but instead it stays alive. and. It was Macy Bell credited with that goal, just getting herself, getting some sort of body part on the ball to get it across the line. Although I don't know that she ever actually oh, touched right. it now that we look at it there, yeah. so we shall see. Yeah, it looks like a, a Mitchell own goal. Get that service in, get that service in. Well, clearly the pressure of Macy Bell. Ruthie Jones almost got a hand on that one coming across. Entering for the Devils, number 13, Emmy Dewar. Emmy Dewar coming in to replace Bodie for the last five minutes and change of this first half. No, Hallie, you dropped the double. You dropped the double because of her. This will be a good test, though, for the experienced group of Duke. Robbie Church has said in years past, when they've gone down a goal, they wouldn't be able to charge forward and come back from it. Can you do it against as good a team as UNC? Duke with some fresh legs out there as well, Julie. The Blue Devils have made some substitutions. Carly Pascal coming in off the bench, number 18. Olivia Migley. Should give some good speed in the attack. Number 10, a freshman for Duke. Maggie Graham, Delaney's younger sister, also on the field. Oh, 
Claudia Dickey having to come out and make that clearance. Well done by Dickey to read that quick off her line. I do love about not having you fans, know. although I love to hear I, it. I, yes, <laughs> you can hear everything. Ali, I need help. Did you hear that one? <laughs> you can also hear, I, can, I hear a lot of Carla. I'm having flashbacks to my playing days. Carla Overbeck, the Duke assistant. <laughs> All the time she'd be like, Fowdy, we need you. <laughs> yes, Carla. Yes. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of Carla on that sideline. Mike, it's so great. Well, and Carla Overbeck, one of the great connections and stories in this North Carolina Duke rivalry. I mean, she's been on the Duke sidelines 29 years as an There's assistant my coach. girl, C -C -C Carla. Oh, step over there, Hall of Famer, your World Cup champion and Olympic uh, champion right. teammate. And let's not forget, also won herself a slew of national championships wearing the other shade of blue for North Carolina right. in her college days. Oh, you got Duke. Let's go. I love that lady. Best leader we've ever had on the U.S. team. Well, and that's that's saying something coming from another pretty good leader herself there, Miss Fowdy. The captain, my captain, I call her. There she is. Yeah, what a what a wonderful addition just to be able to have someone like her to work with these young players. And she's talked about how much she loves it and just loves this way of still being a part of the game. Blue Devils a chance on the counter here, low on the ground for Dickey. They have a horn that will sound at after zero. That is Carly Pascal, senior out of Brentwood, Tennessee, who took that shot. North Carolina with some numbers. Gambon makes a move, gets the ball in and into the goal. What a finish. Well done by North Carolina and Izzy Brown. <laughs> Gambon coming over to the celebrate with her as she should because boy did she do some work on this one. You gotta love when a player, and this is what Gambon did. Ali Gambo, and she faces up. She just says, look, I'm going to take this. I'm going to find a little gap here and finds a beautiful ball to Brown on the Ooh, other side. <laughs> kind of a backwards header, too, but it worked. Oh, what a nice ball in by Gambo. But, you know, this is, this is really the thing about soccer. It's a funny game, as we know. I think Duke has had more of the run of play in this first half, but... UNC, as you've closed out this first half, up 2-0. Well, and so interesting that both goals happened when that second right. unit came on for North Carolina. Yep. And this is the challenge of playing any UNC team for the last 40-some years. Duke ready for their third corner kick. See if they can make something happen on this set piece. Into the box, punched by Dickey. Graham puts it back in play. Nice pressure from the Blue Devils. May get another opportunity here. Pascal stayed after it. And no, excuse me, that's not Pascal. That was Maggie Graham, number 19, who created this chance in another corner. Pascal will try it from this side. A couple of seconds remaining in the first half. Duke trying to get onto that scoreboard instead. They'll have to watch North Carolina push it the other way. 
But the Tar Heels getting a couple of goals in the final five minutes of the first half to take a 2-0 lead at the break. I think one of the things you're going to hear Robbie Church say is, hey, look, I love the way we're stretching them. We're still in this, right? But we have to be sharper, which has been a thing that has haunted them already this season. Have to be sharper in front of a goal when you get those chances. Well, the Blue Devils now find themselves down a couple of goals, trailing the Tar Heels 2-0 at the break. North Carolina getting goals in the 41st minute and the 44th minute. To take the lead, we'll look back at North Carolina's 2019 ACC Championship when we return on ACC Network. Some beautiful fall colors as we welcome you back to Durham, North Carolina. The Tar Heels leading the Blue Devils two to nothing after the first half, but Duke Julie had some chances in that first 45, they just were unable to put away. Yeah, and this one especially early on. Jow with a beautiful cross, ball across to, to uh, Delaney Graham. Cannot convert. And then Bodie getting in. And look at Macy Bell for UNC. She plays this so well. She blocks the seam pass. And then she blocks the shot from Watkins as well. And then UNC doing what they do on set pieces. They just keep things alive. Dorsey there, Bell putting the pressure on. Taylor Mitchell, I think, is going to be credited with that own goal. But they're so hard to defend in those areas. And then Gambone across to Izzy Wood in the 44th minute, 2-0 to UNC. Look at that. Yeah, just a real push from that reserve group off the bench for North Carolina to create those two goals. But you look at the shots, 9-5 to five in favor of North Carolina. Duke actually has more corners than the Tar Heels. So that Duke plan, Julie, of trying to get a little more going in the attack and create more, it looked like early on it was working. Yeah. They just yeah, didn't get that sure. finishing touch. Yeah, and, and that's the thing against UNC. You're just not going to get your looks, and you got to be clean and sharp from the very beginning. I mean, a very different tale that would have been spun in that first half if Delaney Graham or Bodie had been able to convert on one of those. And that's the challenge, too, coming back against UNC. You know, as Robbie Church was telling us on Friday, look, UNC brings it all 90 minutes. And so to pull yourselves out of that hole, Duke knows, is a tough one against a very good UNC side. But not insurmountable with the talent you have on the field for Duke. Well, this will certainly be a good test for the Blue Devils to see how they respond coming out of that halftime break against the North Carolina team that despite the quality as it has risen around them in the ACC has still managed to go through 35 straight regular season Crazy. ACC matches without a loss. And 33 of those are wins. Oh, I know, the numbers UNC has been able to throw up consistently. 22 national titles, 873 wins for Anson Dorrance, only 75 losses in his entire career. I mean, and that's, and, and, and Anson has a wonderful staff around him and Damon Nahas and Heather O'Reilly and Chris Dukar. But boy, the way that Anson has been able to sustain excellence, it's one thing to be great, it's another to be consistently great. And this man has done it for 42 seasons, 22 national titles, 21 actual NCAA titles. The next in line with NCAA titles, Jen, you got it. Mighty Stanford. Oh, I and was Notre just Dame. waiting for you to finish that, Julie. I Mighty Stanford and Notre Dame. But guess how many, <laughs> how many they have? Three. <laughs> uh, slowly catching up. But that just shows you the dominance Anson has created in this program for so long. Bodie with the free kick for Duke. This will create a corner kick for the Blue Devils pretty early on here in the second half. And Cosme will be one of those targets who you're looking at number six for Duke right there. Two goals this year, both of them off of set pieces. Come on, guys, everything out. Our bodies are open. Okay, 
One corner kick, one free kick that Kasi what? put away with her head. This ball, yeah, not going to quite mm. stay in bounds. And Duke knows if you can get one early against UNC, the momentum of this game changes quickly. Duke has struggled to find the back of the net in this series in the last five, which I mentioned they were close. Three of those five going to overtime, but Duke just one goal in those last five meetings with the Tar Heels, that coming in 2017. Teams met twice last year. Once was an early non-conference matchup, a 2-0 win for North Carolina, and then the one that actually counted toward the ACC standings, a 0-0 tie in Durham. But Duke creating something promising here, a chance on the turn for McGuire, but Bell right there behind her. Bodie picks it up. Sydney Simmons will play it to her back line. Taylor Mitchell now out to Emily Royson. Jow trying to play Delaney Graham through. Graham on this side to start the second half. Interestingly, Julie, we saw her slide over there in the first half. She started on the other side to begin with, Duke's right attacking side. And I tried to mention a connection with Delaney Graham to North Carolina earlier, and I did it incorrectly. Let me show you this, because you're going to want to take a look. <laughs> oh look at this, gosh. Delaney Graham and Macy Bell going against one another. What were they about? What did they say? Maybe eight? Under eight, eight, eight here in this picture? Does it get any cuter? That has to be like the bumblebees versus the blue lightning. <laughs> Yes, yeah, oh so those my two. Gosh. Both. And there's Macy Bell, Wichita, Kansas. Yep. Yeah, and Delaney Where Graham. That was from. Yep, she moved to Atlanta, but did grow up in Kansas when she was younger. And so that's when those two faced off. And now with Graham playing in the front line for Duke, they get to face off again. And we saw Delaney Graham, Julie, have a couple of opportunities. She sent some crosses in. She got onto that one early. We'll see if Duke can find a way to get her involved. Here she is right here. Takes it from Jones. Nobody steps initially. Graham will take the shot. Good luck. Yeah, it is interesting, though, switching to that left side because she's going to match up against Fox. Emily Fox and there's Sophie Jones just creating a little bit of space. Graham picks that up. But that's a, a different matchup on that right side for Duke. Migley going against Tolentino. Migley, number 10, getting the start in the second half for the Blue Devils. Pinto. One of those names that is certainly been talked about with the full senior Let's U.S. Go. women's national Let's team. Go. She, Emily Fox, who has three appearances with the team. Macy Bell, those three all called in to training camp after the last season with the Tar Heels. Fox. Looking forward for right Cox. Right shoulder, right shoulder. Good knee. Right knee up. Jow, not can hear. up an inch. Emily you can hear from the sidelines, get higher, step, step. And that's what Duke is struggling is to get some pressure on that ball. Especially with those front three. Stand right shoulder. Up. Because the last thing you want to be doing in this second half if you're Duke is chasing the ball and allowing UNC to establish a little bit of rhythm. Jow just not seeing any good options apparently for this throw, still looking. Finally found Mary-Kate McGuire, now Jones. 
Bell won it back for North Carolina. Graham has McGuire in front of her. Gets knocked down by Pinto. Just to show you the work rate of UNC, though, that's your central attacking midfielder, Pinto, tracking all the way back, helping out defensively. I mean, they talk about a collective defensive mindset for UNC, and that's where you see it all over the field. Pinto over to right, Del right, right, right. Jones. Such a smooth touch on the ball. Sets up Bodie. McGuire back to Bodie. And then Jones tripped up. Leave it, leave it. And that's another thing. We haven't said much of Jones's name. Sophie Jones, the other Jones we have. Sophie Jones in this, the first half. Duke wants to get a little bit more possession. They got to get her number seven on the ball more. And, and sorry, this will the be show. North Carolina ball. Yeah, sorry, Julie. North Carolina ball here. Not a foul against the Tar Heels. Dorsey perhaps a bit ambitious with that ball up the middle. Jones has the Duke defense running. Bella Peruta looking to go back to Jones. Were you and see so dangerous? This set piece. Well, remember that the first Tar Heel goal really started off a corner kick. This essentially a short corner for North Carolina. Talia Della Peruta. Overhits that one. Tomorrow night, the All ACC team will have highlights and scores, plus news and information from around the conference. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. That's 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Bodie, nice looking ball toward Delaney Graham, who does track it down. Graham gets onto it, her shot is high. St. Claudia Dickey touched it. Bodie creating problems again, just trying to bend that one in behind, gets cut out early by Fox. But Graham doing such a good job of keeping that alive, pressing, pressing, pressing. And this is what they wanted in Graham. Beyond stretching defenses, she's going to fight up there. She's going to keep things alive. Good work of those two. Does earn this corner for the Blue Devils. Bodie will take it. Cosme was waiting for it. He's been the specialist on those. Cosme still fighting for it. Two Tar Heels around her. And Duke with their seven shots right now, Julie, equaling what North Carolina's first two opponents had against them. So they are getting some offense. It's no goals to show for it just yet. One of the things Dickey's always been known for, the ability to have that great long distribution. Nancy Doran saying she could be one of the best ever to do that at North Carolina. Tolentino, not on target. 
Little glimpse, though, of Rachel Jones. Footwork and ability to get out of tight spaces. Rachel Jones could have played in the World Cup for the Jamaican national team in their first ever Women's World Cup in 2019. Injured herself, was unavailable, which means she still has a chance she could play for the United States, is my understanding of that. Yeah. Maybe a blessing in disguise, perhaps. Her, her parents are Jamaican, which is why she would have had that opportunity to compete with the Jamaican national team. And what a tremendous and wonderful story that was, wasn't it, in France? Just getting to see Jamaica make its debut on the World Cup stage. And if she's not playing in a World Cup, then maybe she'll become our next Supreme Court Justice, because that's what her dream goal is to be. I wonder if she could be available in the next few weeks. <laughs> could, uh, replace RBG for us. Still remember Becky Sauerbrunn wearing that Ruth Bader Ginsburg jersey. And she believes Cup in 2019, I think it was, right, Julie, when they wore the yeah. names of people who inspired them on the backs of their jerseys, the U.S. players. That would be a foul against the Bulls, much to the chagrin of senior Caitlin Cosme. Bell up there, certainly as a potential target. Del Peruta may leave this one for Tolentino. I love how those sideline mics just pick up everything. Tolentino's left-footed ball trying to find Bell. We'll see, Julie, if we see Sophie Jones just force her way onto the ball a little more. And force is maybe not the right word. I don't think there's a force element to her game. She really seems to find the game so well, but gets herself more involved. She gets it to Tess Bodie here with acres of space around Bodie. Bodie looking for McGuire. Dorsey was on her heels. And now Fox comes away with it for North Carolina. Coming up next Sunday, we have an ACC women's sports quadruple header starting at noon with two field hockey matches leading off with North Carolina Duke and then Boston College Louisville. Women's soccer then takes over with matches starting with Miami, Virginia and capping it all off with Clemson and Duke. That's your Sunday best right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Injury for UNC, so North Carolina years. having to make a substitution here as Paige Tolentino pulled up and has gone to the sideline. Maggie Pierce coming on to replace her. Pierce, a sophomore out of Cary, North Carolina, just down the road. And one of my favorite Anson Dorrance-isms, calling her the human wrecking ball <laughs> as Tolentino gets looked at. Okay. Little trip from Pinto there will stop things and give Duke the ball back. They're going to play it quickly. Royson. Got passed about three different Blue Devils. Eventually made its way to Delaney Graham. Bodie has been one of the biggest sparks for this Duke offense. She gets it back from Jones. Back to Sophie Jones. Her shot bounces and is an easy save in the end for Dickey. 
Oh, I, I didn't argue. Yeah, I, I saw It does look like UNC's almost gone to this 3-5-2 here. When they Tolentino tried out. to start the season in that. Hey, stop! Hard! What's up? What? Cox. Ball bounces and Jones now has it. Ruthie Jones taking over that starting goalkeeper spot for the third straight game for the Duke Blue Devils. She and Brooke Heinsen in a competition there in goal. And you probably recognize that Jones family name, especially if you're a Duke Blue Devils fan or brother Daniel. Now the quarterback with the Giants and three years was the quarterback for the Blue Devils, number six pick in 2019 in the NFL draft. And it's just a very athletic family overall. Yeah. Those aren't the only two athletes, mom and dad, brother, sister. Yeah, sister played field hockey at Davidson. Brother plays basketball at Davidson. Mom played basketball. Dad played football. Some good DNA right there. No pressure either. <laughs> but Ruthie Jones, a sophomore, has certainly stepped up to the task, has had some big saves she's had to make, had some moments, you know, probably still learning from as well. She is still young, but. Now that second unit, Julie, coming on for North Carolina. And this is really where the game changed in the first half. They come on a bit earlier in the second half. They yeah, they do that middle 15 in the second half. So in the final 15, typically he goes back to that first unit. So we'll see how Duke counters. One of the things that the Blue Devils feel they have this year that they absolutely did not have last year was depth and the ability to go to their bench and have it still either keep the same level or possibly even go up depending on the types of players who they bring in. And that was just an option Robbie Church did not feel he had a year ago. But the fifth ranked recruiting class coming into Durham and a lot of other experience coming back as well. As you mentioned earlier, Julie, Duke losing just one starter from last year's team that we made its way back to the NCAA tournament. North Carolina trying to find an opening. Dorsey steps up to help. No service in. Libby Moore. Good defending from Sydney Simmons. Just caught the back of the heel of Bodie. And that'll do it for that. Tar Heel attack goes out for a goal you could, kick. You could hear Anson from the sideline as soon as they played that ball forward, UNC. He says, and now we squeeze, and now we squeeze. So he's pulling that back line up, pressing everyone up, because what they're doing now is when that ball gets turned over, which you see so many gaps between lines sometimes with teams, when that ball gets turned over, UNC is right there to press, which is what they did. They win it back. What makes it so difficult to get any type of counterattack going on them when they get numbers around it? Grace Watkins, Lily Nabet both just came back into the match for Duke. Saw them both in the first half, and they were busy. Got themselves right onto the ball. That was Watkins chasing after it there, number nine. Sydney Simmons, probably the most 
interesting accomplishment over what she did over quarantine, Julie, just makes the rest of us feel like we really were slacking off. What did she do? Well, she <laughs> earned her pilot's license. I mean, her parents are both pilots, so that, that certainly runs in the family. I'm afraid to even think about my children driving a car one day, and she's up there flying a plane. North Carolina trying to use that whip from the far side. Gambone sent the ball in. It set up their second goal for North Carolina, one that found Izzy Brown, number 52. And not only do we have the story of Sydney Simmons getting that pilot Look license, at we that. have proof. Look at that. That's time well spent. Here I was feeling good about my mastery of the Moscow Mule during my quarantine. <laughs> that is to be appreciated Thank you for that, as well. Sydney. <laughs> 50 hours that she had to put in. Took her about three months, Julie, to get that license. I don't know if you spent that much time on your Moscow Mule building, but it was impressive by Sydney for sure. I sadly did. <laughs> Della Peruta has now stepped into that left back position for Tolentino, who came out earlier checking her left leg. Gambone on the left midfield side as well. There's Gambone. Sophie Jones making her way into the action. Former National High School Player of the Year. May not have to have that brace on for too much longer. The Duke medical staff yeah. likes to have the brace on for a full year after an ACL tear, and she's coming up on it. Starter on the under-17 U.S. team and trying to get her way back to the under-20s right now. Clanky has Brown in the middle. Brown will take the shot. Scored her first career goal back in the 44th minute. Looking for more. And Brown and this unit that has come on again, still threatening. And it's been the most threatening, I think, for North Carolina. And there's Brown. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. We're good. And why do you think that is, Julie? Why do you think the second unit has, has maybe caused some more fits for the Blue Devils? Fresh legs, eager, play with a almost a frenetic type of pace. Becomes hard for teams. Macy Bell finds a way to cover so much ground, but that time she left the ball. She went out of bounds, so Duke kept it alive. Get up! Get it up! Let me kick it! Gambone to Libby Moore, number 20 for North Carolina. Macy Bell not only covers so much ground, I mean, she just reads the game so well, too. She's good offensively, great defensively, likes to get forward. You know who she reminds me a lot of, actually, is Tierna Davidson, mm -hmm. former Stanford All-American, U.S. national teamer. And I do think Macy Bell has a future at the U.S. level for sure. Tierna Davidson number one overall pick in the NWSL draft in 2019. She left Stanford early, plays for the Chicago Red Stars. So certainly a nice comparison to have there. Both this calmness on the ball as well that just gives and breeds confidence. 
Speaking of calmness, if you're Duke right now, you should not be calm. You should be thinking, okay, if we're going to change this game and have a chance to get back in it with 18 minutes left, we're going to have to start pressing. We're going to have to start creating some opportunities up front. Right now, a little bit deep. I'd love to see their line get higher so that they can press. Tar Heels looking to get in behind that back line now. The ball not exactly where Holly Clanky wanted it to go. She was making the run. And now she'll actually have to take a seat. Something not right with Clanky. Five five sophomore out of Lee Summit, Missouri, had one assist in 20 appearances last year for North Carolina, and that just so happened to come against the Duke Blue Devils in that early non-conference meeting. She picked up that assist just 36 seconds after subbing into the game and has a ton of speed. So Rachel Jones looks like she will be coming back on to replace Clanky. Pinto also getting set to come back in for North Carolina. Remember, you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer in the second half. And this will give Robbie Church a chance, Julie, to maybe share some of that message you were just saying, that it's really, it's time to turn things up a bit here, take some chances yeah. even more so than what we've seen so far. Yeah, you definitely need to, to turn that switch, right? And you look at that clock and go, because this game is still something you can get to. I mean, you, you get one goal in, and we know how that momentum shifts. But taking more risks, sending more players. Playing on the front foot more. <laughs> I'm just thinking Anson, every time I see him, he makes me laugh. He's so funny. We were texting yesterday, and I I said something, and I spelled it wrong on the text, and he said, see, had you come to UNC, you would know how to spell. <laughs> he waits for any opportunity, know, Julie, to point I that know. out to you. Oh, so good. I just, like, I just shake my head. I'm like, whatever, Anson. <laughs> Oh, he's funny. See? You could have had four rings on those fingers, Jules. <laughs> Yellow card there for Maggie Pierce. North Carolina looking for that 23rd national championship. And right now, just focusing on the ACC. That's what they have in front of them this fall. Brown could not get it across. Well defended there by Taylor Mitchell. That'll set up a corner. Got to love that initiative by Brown, though. Gets the ball, and every time we've seen her, is just going at it. Got the goal in the first half. Taking on, getting in the box. Good things happen when you do that. As he Brown's dad, Chucky, probably familiar to ACC and basketball fans, played at NC State, won an ACC championship there, also 18 years in the NBA. First corner kick of the second half for the Tar Heels toward the back post. Mel Bell overshot it. And danger averted that time for the Blue Devils. Schedule change, remember, we've got Friday Night Lights this week with Wake Forest hosting Campbell at Truist Field in Winston-Salem. Our football coverage starts at 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Change is the name of the game in 2020. Everyone just needs to be flexible, be prepared to adjust as needed. 
It's certainly been the case for anyone playing sports. More. Nobody really getting on the ball. Pierce got there first for North Carolina. Tar Heels keeping it alive. Here's Rachel Jones across the header from Brown, who once again is in the mix. Uh, 18 in for 24. Scrapping, getting second balls. This is what UNC does, right? And then Rachel Jones says, oh, I see we've got another gap here. Brown with her height, finding these little gaps. I'm not entirely sure why Duke is going short on those goal kicks either. I would clear out their lines, get the ball higher, get their lines higher. Because UNC just keeps picking up their goal kicks and then ramming it back down their throat. Jow pushing Jones back the other direction. From goalkeeper to goalkeeper we go. Carly Pascal getting ready to come back on for Duke. Three-year starter, had been a defender, switched into the attack this year. Started two of the three matches prior to today for Duke, came off the bench in this one. Player who's a Hall of Famer like yourself, Julie. She's in the Tennessee Soccer Hall of Fame. Was a two-time Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year in high school, 84 goals, seven-time state champion with her club team. Duke trying to find their way back into this match. Offside on Delaney Graham, which will be frustrating for her. And she just has not really been a part of much in this second half, has she? No, she had that early look again in behind where she got that second chance she created. But no, we haven't seen much of her in this second half. And really, we haven't seen the urgency, I think, that is going to be needed and a little bit more of that bite that's been a bit inconsistent, according to Robbie Church, if they're going to make this turn. And Duke right now, granted there are a smaller number of teams, of course, competing right now, but right now Duke ranked number seven in the country, and this is a team that certainly can compete at the top of the ACC, but they need to find some offense, trying to find it here. Offside, Blue Devils. Offside once again against the Blue Devils. <laughs> if it's Delaney Graham again, she said, look, I'm usually on the back line anyways. It is her. Uh, and that one, you see the whole line, right? You got to be able to be like, okay, Delaney, we get that you've been on, <laughs> on the back line, but you see that whole line in front of you. <laughs> but the idea is, yeah, the idea is I want to get in behind. I like that. Pascal had to hustle to get caught up with that ball. Moore charging up the middle, but was met by Zhao. Bodie in a tight space. Dickie's been nice and clean back there today. Quick off her line. Clean on driven balls across. And typically, UNC plays a situation where they're 
swapping keepers and doing half and half. We've had some injuries to that situation, but you don't typically see a goalkeeper go 90 minutes in the regular season. But if anyone deserves it right now, Claudia Dickey has made that case. Oh, and she was so good last year, Julie, when she did play. And she was the starter for the Tar Heels throughout the postseason. She consistently yep. started and played all the postseason matches on North Carolina's run to the national championship game. Goals against averages. Graham will try to challenge her here. But it was Monks the best in the country, fourth in the nation. And holding the Blue Devils scoreless here so far. Duke has been a little more active here in this attacking third. Graham waiting for it. Seemed really wide open. Want to make sure we tell you about Julie's Laughter Permitted podcast. It's a great one. Fun, thoughtful, candid conversation with trailblazers in sports and entertainment. Julie talking to the likes of Megan Rapino, Mia Hamm, Katie Couric, Robin Roberts. Let's drop some names and always <laughs> drop some donuts. Seasons one, two, and three available now. Season four coming out October 21st. You can subscribe to Laughter yes. Permitted wherever you listen to podcasts. I was just asking you when the next season was coming out. Looking forward to that. We're getting Get back on the saddle. A chance here if Duke can get to this, but Claudia Dickey knew she had to get there first, and she did. Dickey, one of five Tar Heels that were on that US U20 team for head coach Laura Harvey that qualified for the World Cup earlier this year. A chance there for North Carolina. Taylor Mitchell not pleased with the call, but it will be Tar Heel ball. Before it was Izzy Brown running at that back line. Now it's Isabel Cox. The depth, the fresh legs. The constant challenge that University of North Carolina brings. North Carolina number one in the preseason in the ACC. They're number one in the national rankings that were just released and daring anybody to knock them off. Now the Tar Heels perfect so far. 4-1 win against Wake Forest. Just a 1-0 win in their last game against Virginia Tech. Leading this one 2-0 on this corner. Bell gets to it. Macy Bell, one of those players that does not leave the field, usually for North Carolina. McGuire coming back on, try to inject a little something into that Duke attack. Graham won't get there before Emily Fox does and plays it back for Dickey. These two teams will meet again this season. It is a shortened season, just eight conference games for all of the ACC teams in this fall season. Everyone trying to make it into that top eight, make it to the ACC tournament in Cary that begins November 10th. But Duke and North Carolina will play home and away, even though the next one, October 23rd, will not count as a conference matchup. That's just an added game that they both wanted to keep on the schedule. We'll see if Duke can figure out a way to unlock this North Carolina defense. A lot of numbers now up for the Blue Devils. Royson had it. Good. 
the bet was fouled, so free kick now coming for Duke. And Royson for Duke over there, clearly needing a moment. Freshman out of Toms River, New Jersey. Remember that name, Royson, Julie? I know I recognized it and was trying to figure out where it was stirring up memories in my head, but her sister Jenna, an all Big East defender at Georgetown, a team you and I have seen in the College Cup. I think one of the things that's been part of the conversation as we've gotten into this college season is, of course, that it's been a very different type of off season and preseason and not getting a lot of opportunities to truly play 11 v 11 yeah. scrimmages to get ready for the season, nor did you have any non-conference games. It's straight against ACC opponents, and you hate to see that. Morrison really in some pain as she heads off the field. I mean, and on top of that, if you're Duke, you've been log th flogging three overtime games back to back to back. That's true. First time in school history Duke has started the season with three overtime matches, a win and two draws in those. All kinds of creative wrapping going on over there with Maggie Pierce on the North Carolina sideline as Duke continues to take a look at Royson. Back Substitutions are coming now, Royson. Staying on the side. At the moment though, back in action. Free kick for the Blue Devils. Jones got a head to it. Kind of a quiet day for Sophie Jones, Julie. Yeah, and I credit UNC. They've done a good job with their four midfielders to you and to sorry to Duke's three of possessing a lot of that in there, winning that battle. Plus, you have another excellent center mid and Brianna Pinto. Yeah, you know, you talk about the challenge for North Carolina in replacing players like Alessia Russo and a lot of Wubin Moy who played on the defense but was such a big instigator in the attack, especially on set pieces. Lois Joel had eight assists last year. So replacing those in the attack, you never expected it to be one person. I mean, North Carolina always comes at you with waves of different options. And it didn't have to be Pinto and Jones today. but such talented players. Final five minutes. Final five minutes of the first half were explosive. Both of North Carolina's goals coming around that mark. They're first in the 38th minute and then they're second in the 44th minute of the first half. I know, I said blue, because it went off the black. It was off the black. Yes, it was. So Duke will get another shot at North Carolina. They know that later this season. I'll have a lot to take away from this one. Still, I think, trying to figure some things out on how to be more dangerous offensively. They were getting the shots, but not necessarily that dangerous with those that they were able to take. Jones. I do like the Delaney Graham switch though. I think she she brought an element that had been lacking for Duke and that she was stretching defenses. I mean, you just have to have some pace up front. 
A chance here for Maguire who touches it with her left foot. Oh, Mary Kate Maguire could have just pulled one back for Duke. And this is kind of a tale of how they've been getting into those positions. Dickey had it covered, just doesn't get all of it. But doing a good job to get into that position. This hits it. I like too that Maguire just took that first touch because she had those two North Carolina defenders sandwiching her. She did not have a lot of time had she tried to bring it down. McGuire named the ACC Offensive Player of the Week in Week 1 when she had two late goals against Wake Forest and a school record 10 shots in a season opening 4-3 non-conference win for the Blue Devils against the Demon Deacons. You can just leave it. I'll get it from my time. But I agree with you. I like Delaney Graham in that attack as well. Yeah, she brings an element that allows them then to play the way they want to play, right? After she stretched a defense, then they can start to play underneath. It just feels like this field is way too big, though, for Duke to have any success pressing and getting people around the ball against UNC. And they're good in their tight spaces. They've got some creative types for UNC. I think a little bit more compact as well would help. Maybe a consequence of just, you know, three overtime games, a little fatigue, a little slow to step. Come on, Duke. But to have a chance against UNC, you've got to get numbers around the ball and put pressure on them or else they'll play out. Pressure there from Bodie, but it'll stay with UNC, North Carolina. If you're UNC though, Jen, you've lost your three English stars, your leading goal scorer in Russo, right? You come in with three starting freshmen in this lineup and they get a ton of production from their second unit today. I mean, all of their goals, their two goals came 38th minute, 44th minute when that second unit is. You have to be incredibly encouraged by the fight and the bite from these younger kids and the depth of this group. I think that North Given Carolina Clemson that game. Yeah, right. I, and I, you, you talked about it, that Clemson game coming up next week. That's, that's going to be really interesting because Clemson Tigers have started this season very well feel like they are really starting to build under Eddie Redwanski, and that'll be the next opponent for North Carolina coming up after this one. That is next Thursday. And the challenge game. for Duke is all of these have been home games, right? Two ties and a loss in conference, and your last four conference games are away games. That's a great point. Yep. You, you needed these points early, and they're picking up only two points out of three home games. Five, four, three, two, one. Good job, Good job, Ant. North Carolina victorious once again in this series against their bitter rivals. Two nothing our final. And Julie, you know we've talked a little bit. This impressive unbeaten streak in the ACC regular season continues for Anson Dorrance in North Carolina. So a bit of a new look but a lot of the same fight and competitiveness that we've come to expect from North Carolina. Yeah, and Anson will be especially pleased they did it at Duke <laughs> in one of these conference games as well, but a very good performance by the North Carolina team today. So North Carolina victorious in our only ACC conference matchup in women's soccer this weekend, 2-0 our final score from Durham. So for Julie Foudy, I'm Jen Hildreth. So glad to have you with us here on ACC Network. North Carolina winners over Duke 2-0, your final score.